The baseball team finished their road trip Tuesday in San Diego and hosted their game opener this weekend. See how the softball team took on the Power 5 schools as they competed in the Marionette Classic this past weekend. Find out how the men's basketball team battled against the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos and the women's basketball team took on two Big West competitors. Welcome back to another episode of Titan Sports. I'm Jacqueline Davis. And I'm Melissa Sanchez. Titan Baseball began play at Goodwin Field with a three-game series against Tulane. After dropping Game 1, 1-0, one the Titans would rebound in Game 2, winning 6-5. Looking to take the rubber match, the Titans would send Joe Magrisi to the mound. Let's check out the action. Cal State Fullerton versus Tulane. Winner would take the series. Bottom of the second, Titans down one. Josh Earps goes up the middle. Cape Connor and JJ Cruz would score the run. Titans take the lead two to one. Top of the ninth, tied at 3-3. Michael Weisberg flashes the leather and snatches the comebacker, a move that would get him ejected. Later on, Zach White strikes out. Tulane goes on to win six to four in 13 innings. I think it's just a, a learning experience right now. Uh, there's not too much to really do. All we can do is have good ABs, keep swinging the bat, and I mean our defense and pitching is phenomenal, so the only thing we have to do differently is just keep swinging the bat. Tanner Bybee continued his hot start to the season, throwing eight in a third innings and racking up three strikeouts. Junior Josh Earps, who got the clutch hit in game two, would tally three hits and four RBIs in the series. Softball took on Utah, Notre Dame, Oregon State, and number 16, ASU, in the Marionetta Classic this past weekend. The Titans split the series 2-2 two two as they lost to Utah 8-7 and Oregon State 2-0, but dominated Notre Dame 5-4 and number 16, ASU 4-3. Freshman Megan Delgadito led the Titans with five hits and a batting average of 422, scoring in three out of the four games. Trish Parks dominated the mound as she was the winning pitcher in both the Notre Dame and number 16 ASU games. The win over ASU is big for the Titans as it is the highest ranked win since they have not done so since the 2018 NCAA Regionals against UCLA. They head over into the Judy Garman Classic this upcoming weekend. For a recap on all the games this weekend, we take it to Kyle Fulbright and Curtis Redmond for this week's On the Mound. Thank you, Jacqueline, and what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of On the Mound. I'm your host, Kyle Fulbright, and along with me, I have Curtis Redmond. Curtis, thanks for joining me today. Of course, anytime. Well, the Titan baseball team got off to a hot start with their series against Stanford, taking two of three from the number 17th ranked team in the country. But then this past weekend, they dropped two of three to Tulane in their first home series of the season. What have you seen from the Titans so far in their first two series? I mean, in the, in the first series against Stanford, we saw, we saw them come out with a lot of energy. I think scored seven runs the first game. Um, and then just this past weekend against Tulane, it seemed to all go away. You know, they had, they had that first game against Tulane, the scoreless game. Then they had the marathon game yesterday. Um, so just, it was kind of just up and down, really. So pretty streaky. They seemed pretty streaky. Yeah, definitely. Tanner Bybee had, has had two great starts to open the season, but other than him, who has stood out most to you in these first two series and the first six games that they have played? Um, obviously, we got Zach Liu. He, um, he conference player of the week for the first series against Stanford. He had six hits in that series. He was batting 462, I think, after the first series. And then also we got Josh Earps. Um, he, he's like come out on fire. He's leading the team in RBIs. He has four of their seven extra base hits. He's, he's really, he didn't start the first game, but then ever since that second game, he came in, he had a double, I think, his first at bat, and uh, he, he came out firing. Yeah, I think his first hit of his college career was the triple that put them ahead against Tulane in game two. <laughs> All right, going forward, they have some big non-conference series against San Francisco this coming up weekend, Then they also are traveling to National Powerhouse Texas, and then they also play ASU, who is ranked nationally right now. What do you think they need to do in these games to win those series? Well, they, they, what they really have to do is just come out like they did against Stanford. They got to have that fire in them. They got to, they just have, they, they have to play like they have a target on their backs, you know. Like against Tulane, I think they kind of went in looking like, like maybe these guys aren't as good as Stanford was. We, we maybe we'll walk all over them, and they got to, they got to go in with that, with that, with that mentality that they have a target on their backs. They got to come out with some fire. They got to swing the bats. 
and that's something they didn't do last weekend. They got to swing the bats. Yeah, definitely. Now moving over to Anderson Family Field, where the Titans softball team plays this upcoming weekend in the Judy Garman Classic. Uh, they are off to a hot start, starting 8-5. and five. They were picked to win their fifth consecutive Big West Conference title. What have you seen so far in their play? Um, so far this year, they've, they've scored a lot of runs, and that's, that's usually what's going to happen. You know, They bring the fences in for softball. It's going to be a lot more home runs. I think they have 10 home runs as a team. Um, they have a freshman that's kind of leading them right now, uh, Megan Delgadillo. She's hitting like 460, 420, something like that. And she, she's really a catalyst at the top of the lineup. She's, I think she leads the team in stolen bases as well. Yeah, definitely. In the box, she's doing it for them. And then in the circle, Danny Martinez, who was freshman of the week a lot last year for them, now a sophomore, has thrown 39 innings already with that two ERA around there. So really good for them. Uh, lastly here, what do you think they need to do to continue that streak of championships and bring another Big West championship home to Fullerton? Well, the Titans softball team, they, they bring home championships year after year, conference championships, um, and they have a lot of returners on the team. So those returners look to lead the upperclassmen. They got a lot of veterans. Uh, Kelsey Whitmore, she's a senior this year. She had a walk-off home run early in the year. Um, they, they just need to lead the team, um, show them what Titans softball is all about. Yeah, definitely. It'll be interesting to see how their season plays out. That's all we have for you here. I'm Kyle Fulbright with Curtis Redman. Back to you guys in the studio. The men's basketball team was going for the Central Coast sweep at home after taking down Cal Poly in four overtimes. Let's get to Titan Gym, where Fullerton hosted UC Santa Barbara. First half, Titans down two. Max Heidegger hits the reverse layup. The Gauchos scored 11 straight to start the game. But here come the Titans, Austin Owistica gets the tough layup to fall. Fullerton takes their first lead of the game. Later in the second half, Jackson Rowe hits the three. Fullerton led by as much as four, but they couldn't hold on. Shakiri McLaughlin gets the block that starts the fast break. McLaughlin finishes the alley-oop. The Gachos go on to win 75-66. For more on the game, let's go to Brianna Beverly, who has the coverage of the game. Yes, that's right, Melissa. As you just saw, Fullerton made a late push, but couldn't hold on. I had the chance to talk to Coach Taylor right after the game. Here's his thoughts. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. But in spite of that, please, please make sure you put this in writing. Put this on the Twitter. Shout out to our women's basketball program. Going on the road at Davis. I think it's a 28-game winning streak that Davis had and our women went out there and broke it. I think they're sitting in third place for the first time in a long time, so shout out to our women's basketball team, our staff, the staff. They've done a heck of a job, and it's been an honor to sit down the hall from them and watch them work. Now, the biggest statistic that stood out this game was that the Titans only had eight free throws compared to UC Santa Barbara, who had 23 free throws. The Titans are having a three-game road trip starting at Hawaii, and Coach Taylor does hope mm -hmm. to bring back home a victory. Here at Titan Gym, I'm Brianna Beverly, Titan Sports. Despite the, despite the loss, the Titans received another big game from guard Brandon Kamga, who had 20 points to go along with his five rebounds and six assists. With only four games remaining, the Titans will look to remain in the top eight to qualify for the Big West Tournament. Coming off a big win against UC Davis, the Titans would look to keep going against CSUN. Let's check out the action. Big West Showdown Saturday night as Cal State Fullerton takes on CSUN. Right before half, after the turnover by CSUN, Catherine Neff gets the ball for Fullerton and dishes it to Amy Book, who lays it in to cut the lead to six. Still in the second, Catherine Neff would dish another pass to this time to Cat Caroline Gill, who makes the layup. The Titans would trail 32 to 25 at halftime. Now we pick it up in the third after Raina Perez's steal. Caroline Gill passes it to Ashley Ain, who makes the shot, but the Titans would still trail. Under with under seven minutes left in the game, Taylor Turney would turn it over for the Titans and would lead from a three. See Sun. The Matadors would go on to win by a score of 57 to 50. Now following the loss to CSUN Saturday night, the Titans would currently sit in fourth in the Big West with a conference record of 6 to 6. Reina Perez continues to lead in the Big West in scoring averaging just over 20 points a game. The Titans are looking to get more games in the win column of this week's game schedule. Let's send it over to Brianna Collins for this week's edition of Titan Timeline.
What's up, everyone? Welcome to this week's Titan Timeline. Titan Baseball takes on USC tonight at Goodwin Field and then will host San Francisco for a three-game series this upcoming weekend. Next, Titan Softball will host the Judy Garmin Classic starting Thursday. Their five-game slate includes a match with second-ranked Washington on Sunday. Moving on to basketball, where the men's team will travel to Hawaii on Thursday before returning to the mainland to take on CSUN on Saturday. The women's team will also hit the road as they travel to UC Riverside on Thursday before returning to Titan Gym to take on Hawaii on Saturday. Finally, the tennis team will travel to Santa Clara on Saturday for a match with the Broncos. That's all I have for this week. Back to you at the desk. Well, folks, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for tuning in in today's episode. You can watch all our past episodes and game of highlight packages on our YouTube channel. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CSU of Titan Sports and like us on Facebook to stay connected with us. On behalf of all of us here at Titan Sports, I'm Melissa Sanchez. And I'm Jacqueline Davis. Remember to keep those tusks up, Titans, and we'll see you next week.